I am back to finish off the data selfie app with one more feature. And that feature is uh, adding something else to the database, namely an image from the webcam. So this is the perfect opportunity, I'm very excited about this, to use the P5.js library in this project. So actually, it's kind of strange this particular course, this playlist of videos, isn't using P5.js because it's a thing I use basically everything all over my channel. But I wanted to take this opportunity to take a little break from that and then piece it back in where it can make the biggest contribution. The P5.js library is created by Lauren McCarthy and is maintained by the Processing Foundation. The Processing Foundation is a, a nonprofit mission to promote software literacy within the visual arts and visual literacy within technology related fields and to make those fields accessible to diverse communities. So I'm going to use that library to open up a connection to the webcam to display the webcam's image on a HTML5 JavaScript canvas and then to take the data from that image and pass it to the database. So this is another feature that I'm going to add here in the client side JavaScript. I, in, the client side JavaScript is doing the geolocation and it is now going to call the p5 function create video to create that video that video is going to be viewed in the client's browser but then when the submit button is the data from that image will get sent to the server and stored into the database there are a variety of ways that i can use the p5js library in fact there's a whole p5js online web editor for making p5js sketches right there in the browser but what i want to do here is integrate p5js library into this project that i'm building that involves node and a bunch of other pieces that you've been watching me do along the way so the way that i'm going to do that is navigate over to the getting started page for p5js i'm going to look for this link called p5js cdn or content delivery network a content delivery network is a hosting service that will deliver you content. And the content that I want is the P5.js library. So I can click here and then I can grab, uh, you can see as of the time of this writing, the current version is 0.8.0. What I want to use is p5.min.js. When you see a, a JavaScript library, there's often what's known as a minified version and a non-minified version. So if I wanted to really peek in and read the source code myself, I would get the bigger P5.js file. But if I'm just using the library, it's going to be a smaller file size and make things kind of a little snappier. So let me go and I can actually just go here under copy and I can do copy script tag is what I want. And then if I come here into my HTML file, I can go into the header and right above title, I'm just going to paste it in. That should give me the script tag for the P5.js library. Now, interestingly enough, you might have noticed on this page, there's a bunch of things listed. There's like p5dom, p5sound, p5dom.min. Well, I already covered the minified thing, but the p5 library has several different components to it. So the core library that you're pretty much always going to want is just p5.min.js. I also want to use the DOM library. That's where the functionality for using the webcam is. And if I wanted to integrate, there's other functionality in there too, but that's the functionality I'm looking for. If I wanted to have sound in my project, I could also look at the P5 sound library. And I'll link to numerous P5.js tutorials that I have on this channel um, in the video's description if you want to check those out. All right, so let me grab this uh, copy script tag and there we go. Before I get started with P5, I just want to point out that I've added a little bit of code since the last video, something very simple, but just to make it a bit more usable. I added two links on the web page between this data entry page where I'm hitting submit and adding a latitude longitude, and then the list page, which shows the things that are in the database. I also changed these to paragraph elements from divs so that there's a little line break in between each. So now I can go back and forth easily between these two pages and also see the entries from the database with a little bit of formatting. Plenty still to do for you, a creative person possibly watching these videos, thinking about how you want to design this yourself, but a few small improvements uh, so that I can work with this a bit more easily in this particular tutorial. Now I can finally write some P5.js code. First thing that I'm going to want to add to my sketch is a function called setup. This is a little bit of an oddity about the way that P5 works. It's a little different than other JavaScript libraries, but P5 looks for a function called setup in your global namespace, meaning it's just right there, and in this case, in my script tag. Setup is the equivalent of window on load or jQuery's ready function. It's the, it's the function that gets executed when everything ha when the web page is loaded and everything is ready to go. So one thing that I could do is I could take all of this other stuff that I have, why not, and just put it in the setup function. So let's make sure that adding the setup function, adding the P5 library, adding the setup function still works. So I'll go to the browser, and I'm just going to refresh my page, and... <laughs> It's taking a little while to get the latitude and longitude. There, it got it. You'll see that, whoa, there's this blank space there. 
Why is there a blank space there? Well, P5 will automatically add a canvas to your page. So actually, most of P5 is set up to, uh, to draw. So if I were to go to the end of setup here and add background 255, zero, zero, that's a red background, and hit refresh, you can see, oh look, there's a red canvas. Now, the truth is, I don't actually need a canvas for this project, so I'm actually going to add a line of code called no canvas. And then the thing that I do need is I need the, the image from the webcam. So I'm gonna say const video equals create capture video. And this ah, just reminded me that I've made a mistake and I said create video here, which is a P5 function. That's for a local uh, video file, like a movie file that you might load. So actually what I want is create capture. I'm capturing from the uh, default video source of the computer, the webcam. Going back and refreshing the page. First of all, it's asking me if I want to allow this web application to use the camera. And this is very important, right? You can't just have a web page open up somebody's webcam automatically. This is a huge security issue. And so there, there are lots of privacy and security questions that you want to be thoughtful about when building applications that, make ac that access a user's webcam. But here, for what we're sort of tinkering around and learning and practicing with, I'm happy with just allowing it. So I'm going to say allow. And you can see, there it is. Oh, look, and you can see that I am in front of a green screen. Hello, there's me. Now, it's quite large. I don't need it to be that large on the page. So I'm going to say, this is part of P5 as well now, video size, and let's just make it 320 by 240. So now I have a smaller video image that's right there. Perfect. So what I want is when I hit submit, right, I'm going to go, I'm going to say, happy. I want that image to also get sent to the server. How do I do that? I'm realizing that the code would probably flow a little nicer if I move this to the beginning of the setup function. Because ultimately what I want to do is right here, when the user presses the button, I'm grabbing the latitude, longitude, and mood and posting that to the server. So I want to add one more thing, which is the data for the image. Base64 encoding is a method to take some binary data, in this case, the image, all the colors of the pixels of the image, and convert it to ASCII data, meaning a string of text. This isn't doing anything to compress the image, it's just repackaging the same data in a format that's incredibly convenient to pass around. In other words, I need to send the webcam image from here to the server, and a really easy way to do that is by sending a string of text to the server. If I can turn the image into a string of text, then I've got a nice way to post it to the server. In JavaScript, the HTML canvas API includes a function called toDataURL, which takes a canvas, presumably with pixels of information in it, and converts that to the base64 encoding of that image. In P5, the video element has a canvas associated with it. So I can say constant image equals video.canvas.toDataURL. So this is taking the video's canvas, converting it to base64, and putting it in this variable image. And maybe what I'll call is I'll call this image 64. So I know that this is the base 64 encoding of the image. The only thing is this won't actually work. The video's canvas element is not there by default. I need to alert P5 to the fact that I want to use a canvas. And to do that, I say video.loadPixels. This means take that video element, load the pixels onto a canvas so that I can then convert it to base 64. I can add that image then as a property to the data that I'm posting. I can then go to the server, and if you recall, the post to the API of the server just takes the body of that request, the post request, and puts it right into the database. So it's already done. It should already be there. Let's give this a try. I'm gonna refresh the page. I had mango for breakfast this morning, so I'm gonna type in mango and give myself a big okay sign. And that image, we can see it's there. Look at all of this text that's in there. This is the base64 encoding of that raw pixel data. And now if I go to the database, I can see that the latest entry has that base64 encoding. Now we need to have a talk. This perhaps isn't the best idea. Do I really want to include all of the data for the image in the database? Is this gonna be the most efficient way to store this information? 
Almost definitely not. In fact, a more traditional strategy might be to save that image data to a file and then store the path to that file in the database itself. But in terms of this quick and dirty prototyping that I'm doing, this is a nice way to get started with this. And I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer and something that I will include as supplemental code with this video. How to actually store this to a file on the server and then the path in the database itself. Only thing left for me to do now is to add the image to the page that lists all of the content from the database itself. Now, I'm consoling along what's in the database. You can see here, this is the most recent entry and it includes the base64 image right there as a property uh, that it's reading from the database. So the, th this is actually, I already have the template for doing this. I just can head on over to the HTML, the JavaScript code for creating all those DOM elements and I can make another one. Like I can say uh, image equals document dot create element IMG for image. Then unlike putting, I'm not putting text content into that image. Instead, I want to put the base64 encoded data itself and I can do that with the source attribute. So I can say image dot src equals uh, image and oh no sorry uh, it equals what is it item dot image 64 so that's the base 64 encoded data in the database item in the image element source attribute and then add that to the page as well right here image and if I go back and refresh we're getting errors, right? We see, oh look, there's that image there, but we're getting errors because not all of the entries have uh, images associated with them. So one way to, I could do something like error handling and see if there is an image or not, but let's actually just uh, wipe the database clean and make a few more entries and see if this works. I'm gonna manually delete the database like this, go back to the enter page and make a bunch of entries. All right, I made four entries. There they are. You can see that they're all entered in the database. I can go to the code and see like, look, here's the database file. Here's everything in there. I can go over to list and see here are my entries into the database. And there they are. I now have the finished data selfie app. This wraps up the data selfie app module. I've built the project now. It's a crude prototype, but a working version of the idea. So I'm gonna do one more video. I'm gonna come back in a separate video and kind of offer you some ideas, some exercise ideas of things that you might do to continue this. But also I'm gonna show you a few cleanup things that I think are worthwhile. For example, taking the JavaScript out of the HTML file and putting it in a separate file, uh, where you would create, how you would create a CSS file if you wanted to start thinking about layout and design for your application. It's beyond the scope of what I want to do in this series, but I'll at least give you some pointers on how to get started with that.